Hello and welcome. In our previous video, we had seen how to upload an object to object storage in Oracle Cloud, and also we had seen how we can download an object from an Oracle Cloud and push to SFTP with the help of OIC integration. And also we had seen how to do that manually. In this video, we are going to see how we can do the same with the help of OCI functions, and we will trigger this OCI function from Oracle Integration Cloud. I'm here in the Oracle integration instance. I have created this object storage functions test, okay, which is exactly similar to uh, object storage test int, uh, which we had uh, created in one of our previous videos. If you have not watched that video, please check out the video. I will open this object storage function test. The steps are uh, pretty much very same uh, like the our previous integration here. I have exposed this integration over REST protocol. So once this integration receives the request, there are two operations that is a pushed object and the get object. In case of put object, what it does is it will get the file from FTP server. So it will get one of the files based on uh, what we send in the request which to pick. Okay, And then it will push the object to object storage with the help of functions here instead of directly calling the object storage api i have uh, i have called the functions in case of get what it does is it will make a call to our uh, oci function it will ask for a particular object to be retrieved from object storage it will pull the object storage and it will write to ftp and uh, to highlight this this function will send us the binary file here as you see i have given the multipart mix i have uh, created a function uh, with the written content type as application octet so that we get the binary file we'll walk through the code in this video we'll just concentrate on git object okay what we are trying to uh, get is we are trying to fetch this pick underscore capture dot png from our uh, object storage okay. this is the object name we have to give over here oci bucket is the bucket name uh, what we want to name in this in the FTP uh, we want to name this uh, file as uh, capture.png so let me delete this uh, file first from the FTP yeah I, I have deleted this file so now uh, once you have provided the operation that is get object SFTP directory where it has to download uh, SFTP file name bucket name and the object name you have to click on this test button uh, this has completed the integration instance as you can see uh, we have got the object that is pick underscore capture dot png uh, from object storage via this function or ci function and then we had written the same to ftp uh, server let me go to sftp and check okay uh, it's over here that capture dot png it's a, a new file which we downloaded just now so like this we can get an object from object storage via oci function and now coming to the code uh, this is exactly the same like the boilerplate uh, code only uh, difference what you, we uh, did is um, uh, we, we are sending this json data and the request wherein we are sending the bucket name file name and the operation uh, if the operation is uh, get object then it will call a, a get object function which is uh, written in this module that is impl object storage module uh, in the same uh, project okay. and uh, then it comes the uh, uh, exception handling uh, this is similar like we discussed in our previous videos if we are able to fetch the file successfully then uh, the content type is location octet stream with the file okay so this uh, file uh, will be in a byte stream what we send uh, as is because uh, we have to uh, write uh, the file to sftp server in the case of get object or once we get the file from uh, functions uh, as a binary file then uh, we can make use of the reference and uh, map directly to sftp so there doesn't need any conversion from base 64 to binary and binary to base 64 so this uh, uh, conversion uh, time we can save I have modified this content type. Uh, usually, it will be application JSON. So, as per your requirement, you can change the application type. Uh, only thing is, you have to make sure you are sending the right kind of data back uh, over here, response data. Let us go to the implementation uh, function over here. Now, before going that, uh, what it does is it will make use of this OCI uh, uh, module and get the uh, signer. That is, uh, it will get the resource principal signer. Uh, so function will be act as a principal here when it uh, tries to communicate with object family. So, uh, so this uh, uh, resource must be authenticated prior to making a call. With the help of this OCI object storage, uh, object storage client, it will send the uh, principal signer and uh, get the client. And uh, what it does is, it uh, from that, use with the help of this client, it will make use of this get object a function and uh, try to communicate with the bucket and the file name uh, in the particular uh, oci uh, namespace this is nothing but the 
um, configuration parameter what we discussed in our previous video OCI namespace will be unique for your uh, Oracle uh, cloud this call will return a, a status back okay uh, what I am trying to grab over here and save so that we can send the status back if, if we get the status as 200 everything goes well uh, then uh, what I am doing is I am fetch fetching the uh, data and the, and the content of the data over here in the message and sending in the, in the response so object storage is uh, one more element in our list if uh, the status is uh, 200 or anything else we are just sending it back so that uh, while making a response back to our service consumer this object status code will carry the information of object status so that the end user will know uh, if uh, what is the exact root cause, uh, root cause and uh, easily debug the issue I will provide the link in the description for this object storage client uh, which I have made use uh, in this implementation class that is object storage client so th there is this get object a function written in this object storage uh, client uh, if you go down over here uh, there is this uh, get object you have to click on this so it will open this page uh, this is the python sdk similarly if you are uh, making use of uh, node.js or uh, java you can find a similar sdks for your respective uh, programming languages make use of that and uh, build a implementation uh, function for that so exactly same thing i have used over here that is, it is making a call to object storage uh, client and then uh, we are making use of that uh, client and uh, invoking this get object function only the mandatory field uh, i'm passing over here if you uh, compare uh, I'm sending this uh, namespace bucket and the file namespace bucket name and the uh, file name okay uh, rest everything is uh, uh, optional uh, either you can send or uh, it's your choice completely whatever we get uh, in the response that is the data uh, we have uh, fetching weight uh, as I was interested in uh, uh, fetching the binary data I have pulled the content of the data and uh, sending back to my Oracle integration cloud so like this uh, we can have a combination of OCI function and Oracle integration cloud and we can access the object storage uh, family suppose if you are facing the issue uh, while accessing the object storage family you have to make sure you are having the uh, correct uh, policy set for your uh, users uh, in my case I have created a, a dynamic group providing the matching rule as uh, if the resource type is function that is fn func and the resource ID that is learning 236 so uh, if any function uh, is within this compartment uh, then it will be part of this dynamic group so once we have created the dynamic group we have to write the policies uh, so in the policy I have uh, added this to uh, policies over here that is allow dynamic group function group to manage the objects and the object family in the compartment learning 236 by default in Oracle cloud everything uh, is denied we need to allow the access by writing the policies thank you for joining us in this video